HMO versus PPO. Economic climate. Inexcusable. Affordable uh, access to quality health care for all Americans. The economy probably makes people self-diagnose a whole lot more. They don't want to shell out the money to go to the doctor, and I'm sure a lot less people have health care insurance. It's the time away from the job. That's, big, that's the bigger issue. I want to make sure that my value to the organization is always high. So if I determine that I have to go into the doctor, that will be some time away from the regular job. Um, that is basically opportunity cost. It would tell that the employer that I may be more of a liability than an asset. So I want to reduce the amount of time uh, away from the job as possible. Yes, the economic climate has definitely impacted health care and how patients come in to seek health care. Um, some patients, it's a financial stressor for them to come in and have to pay a copay to see their primary, have to pay a copay to see the specialist. They're concerned about what the medicine's going to cost, that they might be prescribed for a certain condition. And so sometimes they don't come into the office because they really just can't afford the copays that it takes to come in, especially if they have, you know, an HMO. We know that patients, unfortunately, without insurance, live sicker and die younger. So insurance is certainly part of the mix. Either they they don't have insurance because of unemployment and also because small businesses are no longer um, able to afford um, to offer their, pay, their um, workers insurance. Well, do you want to talk about what's going on in Congress right now? Because there are some good bills out there that are uh, planning to provide what we uh, believe is uh, affordable uh, access to quality health care for all Americans. With health care, we know the health care reform is um, basically at the forefront and a lot of people are highly concerned with that because they don't know exactly what's going to happen. You may have a job but you may not have health care or you may have a job or uh, the health care may not cover many things that you really need in regards to being covered. We don't want patients to be uninsured and we also think that a combination of a public and a private system is the best way to go. If I could afford to go to the doctor you know for most any little thing I totally would you know but I mean taking time off work insurance I don't have insurance you know uh, whatever you know all of the hurdles that you have to go through what I hope quite frankly is that once we get all of this uh, health care reform business behind us patients will understand that their regular doctor is the best place to start in terms of getting uh, help for whatever is ailing them older people that are on a even uh, you know, more fixed income, you know, like the, the, the tendency to self-diagnose on the internet, I'm, I'm sure is there uh, profoundly, and uh, economics, I'm sure, plays into that. Now, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing depends on your own self-diagnosis. The fact that it has to be used by some people for information because they do not have the money or the time to get to a physician, to me, is inexcusable in the gifted society that we live in. It really depends on what insurance provider that you have, um, uh, HMO versus PPO, because it seems like that would uh, hinder some doctors from giving you some type of test if you only have an HMO insurance. Sometimes patients feel that they may get a certain type of care or may not get a certain type of care, maybe based on their insurance. You know, if they have a um, federally funded insurance versus a private insurance, sometimes they feel like, well, I could, you know, I, I'm not getting the best care, I'm not getting the up-to-date imaging studies, CTs, MRIs, and things like that because of my insurance. People know that if someone has five minutes with them because the HMO boss has said this is how long you can have with people, they know that's not long enough to really understand them. Mutual trust and respect. Distrust of the system. The world's consumer of drugs. Pharmaceutical commercials are pretty scary. I don't trust doctors overall in the current uh, medical profession in America. My personal experience with doctors has been uh, hit or miss. I have, a, I have a, an uncle who's a doctor that I'll call sometimes, you know, but you know, they always say that their their diagnosis is only as good as your description. My father's a doctor, so I trust them. In most cases, the doctor-patient interaction, certainly I strive for this in my practice, is mostly a positive one. It has to be one where you have good communication, where the doctor utilizes our most important tool, which is our ears, to listen. And so I think that promotes really good communication between doctor and patient. I think most interactions are positive. 
um, you know, and there's is based on mutual trust and respect. When you establish that rapport, um, those first several appointments, then you know that they really have your best interest at heart. I believe, and the polling suggests, that doctors are still considered one of the most respected professions out there. Uh, I think we rank up there uh, along with nurses, and uh, as a result, then patients still believe that what the doctor uh, says is, is the truth. I think most of my friends and family, they're more likely to go to the hospital if they were to become sick as opposed to utilizing the internet. Just because there's so much information out there, sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out what's reliable and what's not. On occasion, though, I would suggest that patients will either uh, have a distrust of the system or just maybe have a, a bad experience with a particular doctor, and in which case, if, if somebody is not happy with their doctor, there's no question that a second opinion is the right uh, way to go, uh, and or if they just don't get along with their doctor, then they should try to find a doctor who's uh, got a better personality fit. I will say that I've had my history of getting second opinions, though, you know, depending on what I, if I thought they told me something that I didn't agree with, I would get a second opinion. I love a patient that comes in telling me, well, doctor, I read this, you know, about the illness that you've diagnosed me with or that I think. What do you think about it? That um, is a relationship back and forth. That's something you can't get off the internet. The internet website, they can actually give you information, but you need the exchange of conversation. You need a physical exam to go with that. So I don't think that the internet or the websites uh, drive a distrust between a patient and the doctor, I think it actually builds the trust. Oh, don't get me started on the pharmaceutical commercials. Those definitely make you wonder whether or not, you know, like, oh, I could have that. I think that pharmaceutical commercials are pretty scary. I think they make some medicines that are probably really helpful sound a lot scarier than they are, and I think they probably also make people think they need the medication when maybe they don't. It seems more like the, the cure is wor worse than the actual illness, perhaps, with all the side effects. You're not interacting. You're tired. You don't want to interact with the kids. You don't want to interact with your family. People actually can sit back on the couch and say, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. And then, at the end of the commercial, I have that. Every other commercial that you see now seems to be for some kind of psychotropic medication for depression or uh, for some other mental health condition. And people are going to their primary care doctors asking for these medications. And really, I still feel like they should be going to a psychiatrist. It's not the drug per se that is the issue. It is the push that says it is the only answer. Take this drug and it will cure you, get you well, so you can go skipping into the sunset holding hands with a most handsome lover. They make the commercial somewhat flashy, so there's always something kind of uh, staying with you that one day if you do start having that cough or whatnot, you'll uh, remember that commercial. Healing isn't like that. It's not popping a pill. And it, this is something that our society really would benefit to come to grips with because we are the world's consumer of drugs, legal and illegal. Patients are very influenced by the commercials they see on TV, especially if it's treating a particular condition that they have. They feel that, oh, this drug is out, this is the latest thing, let me get this. When it comes to more specialized things, people who have cancer or rheumatoid arthritis or some other really serious medical condition, they should be, they should be working with their doctor and what they see on TV is probably of, of little help to them. Drug companies have very catchy phrases. People that work in their marketing department that know how to market that drug where that particular catchphrase will trigger, you know, the patient to associate this particular disease with this particular medication. It makes one feel like there's solutions that you hadn't heard about and then it also reveals that there may be problems that you never knew about. To me, I just think that the media spins things so it's in their favor. So you think, oh, well, I was kind of feeling a little nauseous or I was kind of feeling this burning, sensing or tingling sensation and this is going to help it. There's so much out here right now. We're going to die from something. I mean, you know, you fix one thing and, and there's always, well, you know, in addition to this, you may develop blood clots or, you know, but I mean, at some point you just got to trust that the medicine that you're taking is going to do what it's supposed to do. I mean, hopefully it's been tested and, you know, 
and I guess my thing is by the time it gets to me, I, you know, <laughs> it's not much I can do is either take the medicine or run the risk of, you know, um, either becoming worse or possibly dying. Commercials can make you feel like you need something that you never need, you know. I mean, hell, people feel like they need Nike shoes and, you know, the right washes and stuff, you know. When it comes to medicine, it's a really slippery slope to me.